Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I've covered a few different models of a device like this on the channel before, but this is the first one that is specified to cover from 500 kilohertz right up to 440 megahertz. I know the previous model that I reviewed stated that it should have supported the two meter band at around 145 megahertz, but feedback from other users said that the insertion loss at VHF frequencies was actually too much. So we'll test that with this version later in the video. Now, if you do not know what this is, let me quickly explain. So here we have two modern day ham radio transceivers. The top radio is a Yaesu FT710, and on the screen you can see what is called a spectrum and waterfall. This provides a real time snippet of a predefined bandwidth of a ham band the radio is tuned to. Now this is one of the features that comes with the radio being SDR based, that software defined radio. Now this provides useful information at a glance, such as band activity. Before these features were available, most users would need to use the VFO to scan back and forth through an entire handband to find the activity. But with these modern day radios, you can instantly tune to stations that you can see that are transmitting. Now the same goes for the radio underneath, which is an ICOM IC9700. Now this radio covers VHF, UHF and the 23 centimeter band. Again, this radio has a waterfall and scope built in, just like the FT710. So what does this MXS3 actually do? Well, in short, it splits the receive signal between two ports on the rear of the device. This means you can connect any radio, whether it's HF, VHF or UHF, to the MXS3. And then the receive signal will be sent to the radio that's connected and another port labeled as SDR. Now, even really old radios that do not even have screens can support this or use this in line with the antenna. Now, this means we can connect a third party SDR receiver to this SDR port and then use a computer with SDR software to visualize the signals just like you would on a modern day radio that already has these features. Of course, you would not really need to use this with an FT710 or 9700. I'm just using these radios for this demonstration. Now, on the back of this switch box, there's two SO239 sockets, one labeled for antenna and the other for the transceiver, which you'd obviously plug into your transceiver's antenna port. The SMA socket labeled as SDR ANT would then be connected to your SDR receiver. You do have to use a compatible SDR receiver though that can cover the bands that you want to receive or what bands your connected transceiver can cover. For this demo, I'm gonna be using an SDR Play RSPDX, which covers all of HF right up to 1.7 gigahertz. So more than enough to support the connected radios. The send port is where we can plug in a cable to go between the switch box and the PTT output connection that's found on most radios. Essentially just grounding the center pin will activate the relay within the switch, which then disables the output to the SDR while you're transmitting. The MXS3 can handle up to 200 watts CW and SSB according to the specifications. Now the MXS3 does support RF sensing, so if your radio does not have a ground PTT output, you can still use this switch, but you have to enable RF sensing using a jumper on the board, which is shown just here. If you're using SSB, then it would be a good idea to adjust this relay adjustment pot here to suit your needs. You can set it to delay the dekeying once the RF has stopped passing through the switch somewhere between 40 milliseconds right up to seven seconds. Although I think seven seconds is a little overkill if you're using RF sensing. The three auxiliary ports labeled one through to three are used for controlling the PTT of external equipment like amplifiers. If you're using the PTT line from your radio to control the switch box and you use an amplifier, and you can use one of these auxiliary ports to control the amps PTT. Now aux one and two are MOSFET controlled with a rating of 100 milliamp or 30 volts. Aux three, however, is relay controlled and that's spec at one amp over 30 volts. There's also a jumper on the main board next to this aux three relay, so you can either choose normal open or normal close, depending on your amplifier's PTT setup. 
Now, using my VNA, I wanted to measure the loss between the antenna port and the transceiver port, and then between the antenna port and the SDR port for the frequencies covered by this MXS3. Now, between the antenna port and the transceiver on 2 meter band, it looked to be around 0.8 dB. Then between the antenna port and the SDR port on 2 meters as well, there appeared to be around 2.4 dB loss. Between the antenna port and the transceiver on UHF, the 70 centimeter band appeared to be around 0.9 dB loss. And then between the antenna port and the SDR port on the 70 centimeter band, there appeared to be 8 dB loss. On HF, measuring 500 kHz to 30 MHz, there was a loss of about 0.7 dB across both the SDR port and the transceiver port from the antenna port. Now, when it comes to actually testing the MXS3, I connected the SDR output to my SDR play SDR receiver. As the switch was set to RF sensing, I transmitted an FM carrier on the 2 meter band just to make sure it was working. Now, you can tell it works when the RX LED turns off and the TX LED turns on. When you de-key, when in RF sensing mode, the TX will stay on for the delay duration that you set earlier. Now, the SDR software in this case is SDR Uno, and this also can control the frequency of the radio at the same time. So whatever frequency you're tuned in on the SDR software, the radio will match it. For this to work, I'm using OmniRig as a middleman software. SDR Uno talks with OmniRig to either tell it the frequency to change the radio to, or ask the radio what frequency it's set to. You just need to know the COM port of your radio and then enable OmniRig to control within SDR Uno or whichever SDR software that you're using. Most of the latest SDR packages do have radio control features. As you can see from this example, the radio is changing frequency at the same time as the SDR application. You could either listen to the demodulated audio from the radio or from the SDR software. At this point, the choice is pretty much yours. Testing VHF and UHF, there did not appear to be too much difference in signal level. In fact, personally, I'm only interested in seeing a visual representation of the selected band and point click tuning. So to make it easier than scanning up and down the band, especially when using older radios. If you're going to buy a brand new, buy the 510, you know, um, you might get good deals on the 500. So, but to be honest, it's, I, I would recommend it. It's, it's a cracking radio and um, it's, just, it's just a good all-rounder, to be honest. This is Frequency Occupied, please. This is Golf 4, Yankee Kilo Quebec, Chief of YKQ. 300, 300. Roger, roger, 300, we'll go. Not really, but it's okay, yeah. not really. By switching over to the HF radio, now we can also configure OmniRig to control the frequency and mode of modulation. Now I know there's not much need for two waterfalls here, but this is just for demonstration so you can see the radio change frequency and band when controlling this from the SDR application. Uh, from Asia, uh, maybe in about uh, 2 to 7, you have some hotel sugar zero. 73, Mark, have a great evening and also good EX. Mike 7, Victor Mike Delta, Charlie Tango 1, Echo Hotel India. Bye bye. Again, you can choose whether to listen from the radio or the SDR application. Now, some older radios do not have as good filtering for receive or dynamic noise reduction. So, using the latest SDR applications in conjunction with older radios will allow you to have the best fighting chance at eliminating band noise so you can hear those weak stations more clearly. So it's not just about controlling the radio remotely or viewing the spectrum, it's about processing the audio received. Now with this transmit example, you can see that the SDR's input appeared to be grounded or at least isolated to dampen the transmitted signal from entering into the SDR too much. Well, there we go, guys. That's an MXS3. Let us know down in the comments if you've got one of the other versions that I've showed before on the channel. But this is one of the latest versions, and the losses that we saw earlier were more related to the actual SDR rather than what's going to the radio. So I think that's acceptable. Unless, of course, you really need to measure accurate power levels on the UHF bands. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.